Hi guys, Brian the Scare Lion back with another video and back with another Lion Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about a film on Netflix called Bedeviled. It's a horror film and it's starring Saxon Charbino, Michael Edwards, Brandon Suhu, Victory Van Toyle. I don't know if I'm saying that right, I apologise if not. Uh, Carson Boatman and Jordan Esso. Again, probably pronouncing that wrong, but... I am no good with names. And the story is essentially about a girl called Nikki who dies and then her friends receive a notification from Nikki on the phones about an app to download and it turns out that this app is going to be fucking with them and trying to kill them off essentially. Uh, it opens up with this fucking scene where she's like ignoring her mum or some shit. Literally I, I don't understand what the fuck was going on there. but. Aye, uh, then the lights go out and she finds this big fucking gangly monster in the fucking living room. And all I'm thinking that, to myself at this point is, what the fuck? Like honestly, if you're going to have nightmares about a fucking creature, this creature is not it. And if you do have nightmares about this fucking creature, then I'm sorry to say, you're probably not gonna like many horrors in the future. This creature was just fucking stupid. Big gangly like fucking slender man arms and fingers and like a puppet sort of face and shit. And then the little bow tie. It, it, was, it wasn't scary. It was <laughs> it was laughable honestly. This weird creature is just laughable. After the girl dies um, we get to her funeral and well at her funeral this this scene was fucking brilliant. Uh, there's this guy who you can see he's looking at a picture of her and I think he's meant to be looking all sad and shit but instead he's got this look on his face as if he's gone hmm that is the dead girl. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't make this shit up. You just, you just can't. So after we see the whole f little funeral get together thing which lasted for like two seconds uh, we join the group of friends who are mourning their friend that's passed and we get the first like big issue of the film. I don't know if anybody else will pick up on this, maybe it was just me but it felt like the way they were introducing the characters like we were meant to have bonded with them already. It seems like they were just pushing these characters in the middle of a fucking story. It feels like I'd been watching halfway through a film and the the storylines just continue in here. That was really unfortunate. Like, you want that introduction to the characters. You want that introduction where you guys see what the characters are like, and then maybe you can start to get that connection where you feel for the character if they die or something. But no, with this, it just kind of jumped in halfway through, it and I didn't like that fact. Another big fact of it is the girl who died at the beginning was best friends with, with, what do we call her, the heroine of this story and it wasn't needed. Like honestly it was not needed. They came back to it like twice maybe and the fact that she was the best friend, were we meant to have some emotional connection? Like right in the first scene you see her break down, break down and crying. Now in scenes like that, you're meant to actually connect with the character and feel what they're feeling. Their best friends just died in that. But with this, the best friend was kind, the whole best friend angle was kind of irrelevant. So I don't see why they tried to push that. She could have just been another one of the friends. She literally just could have been part of the group and they felt that. They all felt the death. I would have understood that, but for the fact that one of them has to be the best friend, and they tried to make it a big point later on in the story, where uh, the lassie's talking to her and she's like, oh, so it's always about Alice and Nikki, it's always about Alice and Nikki, and it's like, was it? Are we meant to understand that it was always about Alice and Nikki? We really didn't have that impact, so that really drew away for everything. I think the biggest feel that I really got for this film was the fact that it just felt like somebody had played like Simulacra or maybe even Sarah is Missing and just gone, let's make a scary film with an app. It, it made no sense. Don't get me wrong, Simulacra and Sarah, Sarah is Missing 
I really enjoyed their games. They're fucking brilliant. I would have played them on the channel, but I've already played them before I even made the channel, so there would have been no point. A lot of the scares were like proper predictable. Like you had the whole looking from side to side, like, oh, there's nothing there. Oh, there's nothing there. Oh, there's something there. Ah, shit. Run. It, it, it kind of felt predictable. Even down to the fucking. There's a scene where the guy's in the gym, uh, in the gym, in the locker room. And he's getting the text for the mysterious fucking app. Ooh. And and he goes to follow the sounds. And then there's this big dumb jump scare where it turns out it's the janitor. And it's like... Predictable again. You, kind of, you, you knew it wasn't going to be the fucking killer. You knew that this person wasn't going to die at this point. And I uh, fell flat. Like, a lot of the big jump scares just fell flat. The characters themselves, uh, I'll take nothing away from the actors. The actors in this film were pretty decent, which led me to feel pretty sorry for them. Because of the fact that they were actually doing a really good job with this script, which was absolutely terrible. The, the script was horrible, the story was horrible, but these actors were actually doing a really good job uh, pushing forward a good narrative, kind of. If you understand what I mean there, it's hard to explain. It's good acting with a shit script. But the characters, the characters themselves in, within the script, oh, it, it was literally the whole insert typical teenage horror character here. Uh, you had the best friend, or friend, because Nikki was the best friend, sorry. F fucking stupid. But you had the friend who was a little bit more loose than the main character. You had the boyfriend who was acting douchey at times. I think the worst one uh, was the character Michael Edwards played, which was Cody. This whole film bases on fear. Like, it, it's the app using what your fear against you. Cody, his big one was white people and cops. It seems like the film went with that whole stereotypical, oh, he's black, so he's scared of white people and cops. One of the big things that I got was, I, I was an hour into the film, one hour into the fucking film, and I'm sitting there going, please, please, will someone fucking die? This is a horror film, and we've seen one death so far, and it was this girl at the beginning that we know fuck all about. We literally know nothing about her, except she's best friends with the main character, apparently. Now throw it out there like doubting the fact that this fucking uh, malevolent being thing has gone after them out of this app. And they're all together. The first thing that we get is the stereotypical, the main character knows exactly what the fucking app wants. They know exactly what they're trying to do in that. Uh, which I guess you can excuse because... It's a typical thing, it's in like every single horror. But the one thing that I can't excuse for this, this one scene, is her boyfriend is so fucking dumb. He smashes up his phone so that the app can't get him. And the phone magically fixes itself, right? Which you kind of expect. Now what do you do in that situation? Right, you've got a multiple choice here. A, you, you just start running. You just start running and don't stop. You got option B. Go to the woods or go to a trash can or whatever. Throw your phone in there. Walk away. Or you've got the final option. Take your phone with you even though it's you've tried smashing it and it's repaired itself. He goes with the third option and I'm just sitting there thinking, why? Why keep your phone? Smashing it didn't work. At least try throwing it away. Maybe it'll magically reappear in your room or something, but no. We finally get to the scene where the first character is going to die. The first character out of this main group of friends. And it's the boyfriend. It's the dumb fuck boyfriend. And basically, he gets a call after he's misses. She's like, uh, I'm, I'm not feeling safe. Can you come over and that? He, he goes over, right? And he's, st he's still on the phone here. And this, this is the fucked up part. Right. She's saying, can you come closer? Can you come closer? At this point, you're like, yo, is this really you, you fucking mental cunt? Right, that, that'd be me. Right, straight up. Is this really you, you mental cunt? 
And then the voice changes on the phone. It's like, come closer, all oh, that shit. What is it? It keeps going fucking closer. I'd have been out of there quicker than a fucking Catholic priest when he hears sirens, honestly. But no, this dumb fuck decides to go closer and he ends up being killed. What did he fucking expect? Let's be honest, what do you fucking expect if you're going closer when you hear, come closer? Fucking dumbass. The death scene for the other girlfriend, the one that wasn't the best friend, but in the film kind of looked like she was the best friend, even though she wasn't it. Confusing. Fuck it. Let's move on. Her death scene was funny as fuck. That's a fucking, like, proper messed up bear. Like, its face is all fucking creased in and shit, chasing after her. Like, uh, it was fucking laughable. No scariness about it. It's got this weird scene where it's, like, fucking running like this towards her. Uh, it was funny as fuck. Like, uh, probably one of my favourite moments in the film. I guess the one death that could have been, like, perceived as scary, maybe, if you were new to horror, or maybe just not as desensitised to it as I am because I watch so much fucking horror, uh, was the death of the Asian character. Like, he was killed by this fucking, I don't know, like, sort of ring-looking fucking woman. Like, I, I suppose that one could have been pretty scary. So, fair enough on that one. But the others, no. Nah. <laughs> just, just no. Nah. And then we finally get the reveal that, oh my god, the app has a demon inside it. And it's like... Okay, this film just lost all fucking originality. It's, it's an app possessed by a demon. It's pretty much rinse and repeat fucking crap at this point. That we've just seen in a million other horror films. Oh, it's an app. Let's put a demon in there. One of the things that I did like was the whole use of fear. The fear being used as a weapon. Although I liked it. Nowadays it seems like too many films are starting to base after that using fear as a weapon rather than anything else. And it's a shame because the concept is really good, but when you see it over and over and over and over and over again, it kind, it kind of draws back from it. You don't get that full excitement of seeing someone's fears brought to life and used against them. When it came to the actual death scenes, it seemed to focus a lot more on making the characters feel uneasy rather than the audience. And I feel like that's what you need. You need to make the audience feel uneasy as well as the character themselves. Uh, because when you get that big fucking scare moment that you know is going to come, you want to be feeling uneasy beforehand or else that scare isn't going to have the full impact. There are a few scenes in this that probably could have had an actual scary moment. But the, since you don't feel uneasy leading up to that moment and everything's just predictable, it, it really draws away for you. So, maybe they could have lent Mare into making the audience feel uneasy. That, that's my takeaway here. We finally get onto the showdown where, you know, they figured out a way to defeat the evil app and it's by installing something that will delete the app. Fair enough. Because, you know, the two surviving characters were uh, Cody and Alice. You know, the guy with the fear of white people and cops and the over-paranoid main character whose best friend had died, but it wasn't really a best friend. Let's be fucking honest. Michael Edwards' character, Cody, is a fucking tech whiz. Like, he knows everything about phones and crap like that. So he's the one that's installing this. It doesn't work for him. He isn't able to save himself because the firmware in his phone stops the app that he's meant to be blocking. But if he's such a fucking tech whiz, he would have known that his firmware would have fucking stopped it, so... But that is a massive plot hole. Like, his firmware, he, he just knew it would have stopped it, yet... He didn't fucking think it through. Dumb ass. Dumb ass. So aye, he dies, uh, main character lives, big shocker, the heroine lives. So aye, she survived, and then we see her escape into her mum. Who then starts to... Then we see her start to use the app. And she's like proper shocked about it. She's like, oh, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. And all that lot. And I'm just thinking to myself, bitch, all you did was delete the app off your phone. It's still fucking out there. Of course it's going to reach more people. 
You saved yourself. You deleted it off your phone. Fair enough. Disney save every cunt else, does it? You fucking moron. So I just had a stereotypical dumb fuck of an ending. So the rating that I'm actually going to be getting this is rinse and repeat. I feel like I'm being pretty generous here, but it's mainly due to the fact that I felt really bad for the actors in this film and the people shooting it because it, it seems like it was shot really well. The acting in it was actually pretty decent, but it was let down by a fucked up story that just made no sense. A very bad fucking script. And a non-scary monster. It was... You just feel bad for everybody involved in this. Yeah, it could have been done a lot better. Honestly, the characters in this, I probably would like to see them in another horror film. Because... Maybe, they, maybe they'd actually get what they deserved in this. Fucking hell. And there you go, there's my rating of... Well, another terrible fucking movie. Oh, God. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did enjoy it, don't forget to butt fuck that like button. Catch you on the next one.